I wanted to make the guidelines for assignment 3 available to you in this format because that way you can not only see them in writing but also it gives me a chance to add comments which is harder um, if I were to put it on a, on a written document for you. So assignment 3 is provide a written analysis of a sample of language as used by the social group you introduced in assignment 2. That means some members of that social group um, should be in your language sample. They don't. It doesn't have to be an exclusive sample of group members. They can be speaking to people of other backgrounds, but it should be somebody who does something interesting with language, and that interesting part should have to do with with their social group, with their background. The assignment targets three skills. The first skill is to find data that's not only interesting but also suitable. So identify a suitable, interesting sample of language as used among members of your group. Interesting means that you'll be able to say something about the data for your assignment. Second step is analyze the data. You should analyze the data in a principled way and try to find out how language use is linked to group identity in your group. That's the, the guiding question. Number three, present your findings. Uh, provide a write-up that ties in some existing scholarly literature. It's not research heavy, but I'd like you to be able to find a source, something that another scholar has published, um, which is relevant to what you're doing. Uh, the formal requirements are all at the end of this presentation. So as far as number of pages, hold off until the end. First, some more notes about the first step, finding data. Where should the data be from? Um, well, many or most of the groups that students presented in assignment two have a history of immigration. They come from abroad. Um, therefore, in some cases, reference to the source country was relevant for assignment two, but not for this assignment. We are really interested in examples of language used in the United States from a diversity point of view. So we want a sample that comes from around here. Possible data types, not just recorded conversation. It's audio or written language or video that you can use. Recorded conversation, that's, that, that's a nice thing if you're able to record a conversation that's relevant to your topic or an interview with somebody, you ask them questions, that'll get you great data. Or a recording of speech from, from a radio show. Maybe there's a call-in show uh, where something interesting happens. Go by your instinct. Go by something that interests you, something that you've always thought might be interesting to do an assignment about to, to as a chance to look in more depth at it. Um, YouTube videos are good sources, can be good sources um, if they're relevant. Facebook discussions, this is now written data, or a Twitter thread, or a series of private emails. Uh, or other written types, um, always check back with me and Gray and Erica. Um, they'll be keeping a list of who has found their data and um, and they, they'll also be able to give you feedback on ideas you have for data. Um, if you do recorded conversation, I'm saying at least 10 minutes. This is not what we're grading you on. You just need enough to be able to do an interesting analysis with it. But as a rule of thumb, 10 minutes of conversation, 10 minutes of an interview would be the lower end. Uh, if you record speech from the radio, that can be very dense and five minutes might be enough, uh, even though it might be less dense than uh, an interview you conduct, so you might need 10 minutes from the radio, just as long as something interesting is in your sample. That's the most important thing. YouTube videos, who knows? They're so different in format and content. If you analyze a Facebook discussion, you are going to want to copy every sample that you're looking at into a Word document so that it's isolated from other contexts and you have your own corpus to work with. Uh, if you do that, I would say 700 words. That's a minimum where you can start hoping for interesting stuff to be going on. Um, for Twitter, being intentionally 
densely packed. 400 words might be enough. This is all approximations. If you do private emails, emails tend to spread out more. 800 words would be a minimum. Um, but you know, you you know well how different emails are in length. Uh, it should get interesting at the level of content and language. Some examples, and these are, I have made up topics. Say somebody was uh, working on Italian Americans in Utah. Um, for data, they might use a recorded Skype conversation between the student's grandmother, who was born in Sicily, and the student's father, born in Ogden, Utah, and the recording is 35 minutes long. That would be prime data. I'm sure there's a lot to be said there about generational differences in language use, about the amount of actual Italian that enters the different participants' speech, and so on and so forth. Example two, uh, Let's assume somebody was working on Algerians in Houston for data. They might use recording of a radio show from a community radio station at the University of Houston. A 10-minute conversation between the Anglo-American host and a caller who is Algerian-American. Um, and phone-in settings generate all kinds of topics that might be really good data. Or example three, Latinos in Lancaster, PA now um, there's not a lot of Latinos in Lancaster, PA, but there might be a discussion on a Facebook group page for that presumably rather small group. Um, and that might ex be exactly the place where some really central topics are discussed and you get to look at language use, the amount of Spanish, the amount of English, the uh, kinds of mixing you find. So uh, these are all things that are, you know, I completely made up, but this is kind of what you're looking for. Some more notes about the second step about analyzing your data. I said it needs to be systematic. That means you need an overarching question and a kind of a perspective that you apply to your data. To give you some ideas, this is really hard to say in a general way that fits every project, but to give you some ideas, um, you can analyze aspects of the language used as well as aspects of the content of the language, its topics, the arguments made, the opinions that are voiced. And um, you might ask which aspects of the language in your sample are really group specific. What is there that you can only find among members of this group? That would be the first step. For example, are there any words that only members of this group would use? Are there any accent features that stand out? Any syntactic features or interactional features? If you remember, we talked about rhetorical features of African-American vernacular English, call and response or uh, signifying and testifying, clowning, things that are community specific but don't reside in the form of the language. They re reside in what is done, but it's a shared practice that's unique to the users of this in-group dialect. What are some other good questions to ask? How do speakers express or imply group identity? That's a good overarching question. Do speakers celebrate their identity in the diverse spectrum of American identities? Um, this question only makes sense if they speak about their group. It has to, the topic has to tie into that. Or are speakers critical of their own group? This question only makes sense, again, if they address the group in terms of topic. Not everybody may address their group identity at the level of content? Or are speakers critical of their environment? Do they speak about living in the United States, for example? What if I'm analyzing written data, you may ask? Things work a little differently when you analyze spoken data. Well, if you do written, you cannot look at accent in a primary way, you can't just describe the accent of your speakers, but you might look at spelling. Spelling is sometimes used to index certain accent features. Uh, maybe there's something interesting there. Do I need to transcribe my data? Um, well, it's always a good idea to transcribe your data because that way you get to know it really well. I can only recommend that, but I'm not asking you for a transcript. 
might be enough to listen really carefully two or three times and taking notes on it and noting where the interesting parts are. In terms of requirements, it's enough if you transcribe excerpts from your data that are relevant to your analysis and to your argument, and then you will bring in those excerpts at the relevant points in your paper. So more about um, presenting your findings, the write-up part of the project. Um, the research part involves finding two secondary academic sources that are relevant to your topic. That means relevant to your group, to the data you have found, to the topic you're discussing about the data, or some other way. They need to matter. Possible source types include an article in a scholarly journal. That's the big one you want to shoot for, but also a chapter in an edited volume in a scholarly book or a monograph, meaning one long book written by the same person on that topic. These types of sources are not allowed. Newspaper or magazine articles, fictional texts, encyclopedia entries, and so on. So focus on that first group journal, volume, monograph, and I'm sure every topic will have some relevant stuff. You need to tie it in, report other people's findings and arguments, and say whether what you find supports their findings or does the opposite. Cast it in a different light, or maybe it adds to what has been found before. When in doubt, ask on Piazza. That's the best place to ask because with these kinds of questions, you're never alone. If you have that question, that basically means somebody else is right now asking themselves the same thing, but maybe they're not by a computer. They might be in the gym and just thinking about these things, and then by the time they're back at their computer, they've forgotten about their question, but you haven't, so you ask on Piazza for everybody's benefit. And the writing format involves that you should cite your sources in APA format. Remember, Noodlebib is your friend. If you get these slides as a PDF, this here is links to the course website, but you know how to find the course website at the PCL that uh, Kirsten prepared for us. Please use subheaders to divide your paper up into three sections. An introduction to the topic, the analysis part, and a third part where you state your findings and your conclusions. In different terms, the first part is where you tell them what you're going to tell them. In the second part, you tell them. And in the third part, you tell them what you've told them. You wrap things up and conclude. Um, please leave one blank line above each subheader and no blank lines below. That's a way to make it look nice and to not waste space. So only one blank line above a subheader. Otherwise, you don't really need blank lines because you indent the first line of a new paragraph. Empty lines are reserved to stand above subheaders. And now finally, the formal requirements. The easy part, this is because it's so straightforward, it's easy to get this right. And uh, it's really important too, because if you don't get the formal requirements right, that, that really sticks out. And you don't really want your paper to be looked at in that way as that paper that did the margins wrong or something. If you just get these right, that's a significant step towards a successful paper or let's say a minimum requirement. So I'm asking for a minimum of six pages of writing. Uh, there'll be points deducted for lack of volume or for space wasting. So we want you to fill those six pages with quality. There isn't an upper limit for a number of pages. If you have 14 pages worth of good thoughts on your stuff, we welcome your writing. Line spacing should be one and a half. Other classes may ask for double. One and a half is another standard. Um, let's use that. For the font, please use Times New Roman and 12 point size and nothing else one inch margins all around. The header at the beginning of your paper should be your name only. I don't need your EID or my name or the name of the class. Um, we know what's going on. And then a title of your paper centered or left aligned in boldface. Uh, that's all we need at the top. So, you know, we don't need to waste a lot of space there. 
please submit your paper in hard copy. Now, this means um, that I'm asking you to drop it off at my office, Parlin 219. Um, the pages of your paper must be stapled together. We really don't want the paper if the pages are loose. I have moved the due date because um, I'm thinking I'd prefer to read papers that show that you've had a little bit of time to do them. Friday, May 15th at noon. Your grades won't be ready until May 22nd. That's the due date for us to submit the grades. So um, May 15th seemed suitable. Please have the paper at my office by that time. I'll be there at 1 p.m., probably not return for a few days, so it really it needs to be there by noon that day. If you have questions, Piazza is the best place to ask them.